Hello, friends. This is Peter Herbeck. Hope you're at peace in Christ and um, having a happy Lent, making our way through this very, very important season in the church year. You know, a penitential season, a season where we get serious, as I mentioned in an earlier video about our battle against sin in our lives. We're resisting sin. We're, uh, you know, through fasting, through um, almsgiving, through increasing uh, our prayer time, reading you know, spending more time in scripture, frequenting the sacraments more often, whatever it is that you're doing, all of these things are helping dispose us to the work of the Holy Spirit. In and of themselves, the things like almsgiving or even extra prayer, whatever we're doing, almsgiving, it doesn't automatically change us. What it does is it disposes us more with greater intention, with humility, to the present action of the Holy Spirit in our lives. The Holy Spirit is the one who produces change. He's the one who makes us holy. He's the one who gives us the, the grace we need to slowly put to death affections we have for sin in what we're resisting, and at the same time, awakening in us a deeper love, a deeper passion, a deeper zeal for the Lord, and deeper conformity to the person of Christ. And so, uh, it's just a, such an important time, and I think one of the one of the spiritual gifts that is, uh, you know, all the spiritual gifts that the Lord wants to give us are significant. But I think one in particular that I've been thinking a lot about, I just want to share with you, and I think it's often misunderstood: the gift of the fear of the Lord. I want to begin by just looking at Isaiah chapter eleven, uh, verse one through three, and these are he's describing really characteristics, um, the endowment of the Lord himself, the Messiah, what he's like, and the gifts that he carries, and then, of course, that he wants to give to us. There shall come forth from a shoot from the stump of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. And the Spirit of the Lord shall be upon him. Remember, Jesus said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. The Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, and the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And this is the verse that that. Uh, caught my attention. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. Jesus, the anointed one, delights. Even to this day, the writers tell, spiritual writers tell us in the fear of the Lord. So I thought it would be helpful to just take a look at what St. Thomas Aquinas and some of the other spiritual writers say about the fear of the Lord so we, we understand what it is and what it isn't. Because uh, a misunderstanding of it, I think, often leads us people, to, folks, to not think about it very seriously, or to hunger for it, and to thirst for it, and to pray for it, as a, as a, to to grow in us. It's a foundational, foundational gift. So Saint Thomas Aquinas talks about the fear of the Lord as a, a kind of wonder and awe. You know, we stand in awe of the majesty and the sheer magnitude and the greatness of God. With the gift of the fear of the Lord, we're aware of the glory and majesty of God. A person with wonder and awe, knows that God is the perfection of all we desire. Perfect knowledge, perfect goodness, perfect power, perfect love. This gift is described by Aquinas as a fear of separating oneself from God. He describes the gift as a filial fear, like a child's fear of offending his father, rather than a servile fear that is the fear of punishment. Also known as knowing God is all-powerful. Right, so this fill the servile fear is a fear of uh, he says of being punished, and that's not a bad fear, but it's not where the Holy Spirit wants to take us because it's still valuable and say salutary because it helps us be wise enough to not want to offend God, and even if it's at the the low level of just I just don't want to be punished, I don't want to suffer the consequences of that decision. That's a good thing, but it's not enough right? It's not enough. That's why filial fear is, is the distinction of it's very important. Okay. Um, fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom because it puts our mindset in its correct location with respect to God. That is critically important. Fear of the Lord, brothers and sisters, gives us sanity. We're rightly ordered to God. When that when we're not rightly ordered to God, we're living in disorder. 
We've entered unreality. We've entered into, we've really entered into the darkness. We've entered into uh, our own finite mind. We've, we, the enemy is the one who leads us away from God in this kind of way. And we see it in the culture so much. We see the apostasy that's happening. I mean, so many people, you know, are just kind of boldly saying, no, I just don't believe in God anymore. No, it's just not in, not on my, 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 game, my screen. I'm just not, a, I don't care about it. Don't believe in it. Don't need it. And so I'm going to live, I'm going to define reality apart from God. It all sounds nice and free and wonderful and aren't we autonomous, but it is really dangerous and really foolish. The fear of the Lord is wisdom because God is real. He's the ground of being. And in him, we live and we move and we have our being. So when we decide in our, our bold freedom, we pound our chest and say no to God, right? we're saying no to the very ground of our being. We become a disordered contradiction in us. We get disconnected from reality and truth itself. Even though people end up talking a lot about their own truth a lot in the midst of it all. But this is really, really important, right? We're finite creatures, dependent creatures. He's the infinite, all-powerful creator. The spiritual gifts are like different than the virtues. You know, the virtues uh, that are... Uh, the the virtues that were, were given, like prudence and justice and things like that, by our human will and decision, and God helps us, but we can exercise and build those habits of responding in the right way toward these those fundamental goods, right? But spiritual gifts are different. Spiritual gifts are, is really, they grow from the impetus uh, and the initiative and the power of the Holy Spirit within us. So understanding that it's important in your prayer during the season, we wake up in the morning, go to bed at night, ask the Lord, Lord, please bring me into a deeper understanding and experience of the fear of the Lord because I want to be rightly ordered to reality. Here's uh, Father Reginald Gerigou Lagrange, one of the great spiritual writers of the 20th century. He described it this way. He said, the gift of fear is the first manifestation of the influence of the Holy Spirit in a soul that leaves off sin and is converted to God. It's the first manifestation. He said, the holy fear of God is the inverse of the worldly fear, often called human respect, the fear of men or the fear of God. Honestly, I think it's going to be one or the other for human beings. We're either going to fear men, powerful men, influential men. My, my, uh, my you know, future depends on certain people uh, that I'm rightly related to them and they hold my ticket and I don't want to be rejected or forgotten, dismissed by people, powerful people, right, in my life, whoever we give power to. And that's a, that's a slavery. It's kind of, it's idolatry, really. And it's a slavery as all idolatry is. He goes on to say, it is superior also to servile fear, which we mentioned earlier. And he said, servile fear, which trembles at God's punishments. It diminishes with charity, which makes us consider God rather as a loving father rather than a judge to be feared. So as love increases, we move from servile fear into filial fear. Uh, God is my father. So that profound respect and awe of God begins to go. But I, I'm not living in a kind of terror like God's stomping around in heaven. He's really mad at me. And because of the relationship Many people have had with their fallen fathers, every human being is broken, but some, some are very broken and their experience of their father is terrible. And, and so it kind of stays there and then they take that image and a father, an earthly father is meant to be an image of God the Father. And when that image is broken, it's very hard to see God the Father in any other way. And filial fear is really rooted in profound charity. Here, here uh, Lagrange talks about, he says, filial fear and the gift of fear dreads sin especially more than punishment due to it. Why does, why does it dread sin? Because we don't want to offend the one we love. And the, the holy God, the great God, boy, that's so healthy when that's in us. It's part of the road to freedom, friends. And it says, it makes us tremble with a holy respect before the majesty of God. Sometimes the experience is so vivid that no meditation, no reading could produce a like sentiment. It is the Holy Spirit who touches the soul. Uh, this holy fear of sin is the beginning of wisdom, for it leads us to obey the divine law in everything. Fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Friends, the, the culture is psychologically broken because it's 
walking in foolishness and not wisdom. And the foolishness is what? My own wisdom, my own truth, my own reality. We need, this is the road back. The fear of the Lord is a key element of coming back to sanity. And the Lord will have to bring us back to it because when human beings get far enough away from it in their own will and the darkness we're walking into becomes their light and the resistance to God becomes very strong, God has to act. God has to act in a way that people experience the consequences of their decisions, of their radical autonomy and all that that means and what it leads to. I can't go into that here now, but very significant thing. I mean, and he mentions here that the Holy Spirit touches the soul. And I love his wording here. It can be, it can be experienced that's so vivid that no meditation or reading will get you there. I've had a couple of those experiences in my life as a young man when I was like 20, 21. I just experienced tremendous in the context of prayer with a few other guys, college guys. I was in the seminary with the college seminary. We were praying and the Holy Spirit came down and began to touch us. And I just had an overwhelming experience of the holiness of God the Father. And I, I, I'll never forget, like in my heart, I felt like God the Father was saying, no longer will they make fool, make a fool or take lightly my son and his sacrifice and his precious offering of his this act of love to the Father. You know, and I, it's hard to put words on, but it gripped me and I did shake a little bit. And it wasn't like that the servile fear was deep filial fear. And I'm just so grateful to God for it. St. Augustine said this while he was teaching, um, you might say catechist, people were teaching new believers or people who were coming closer and are inquiring about who God is. And he says, uh, starting first with, uh, he said, it's important for people to come in understanding of the love of God, of faith, hope, and love. And then he says, and starting precisely from that very sternness of God, like at a, as a starting point, he's saying, which makes the hearts of mortals quake with fear that is greatly to their benefit. We must build up love from there. As people rejoice in the experience of being loved by the one whom they fear, let them have the courage to love him in return and let them be afraid to prove unworthy of his love for them, even if they could do this without retribution. In fact, he says, it very rarely happens, and I can safely say never, that anyone comes wishing to become a Christian who has not in some way or, e or other been struck by the fear of God. This is normal, a normal part of the Christian life because it's a spiritual gift, and it's something that we need. And St. Augustine is saying of all the converts he's ever met, and he met a lot. He said every single one of them in some way was struck by the fear of the Lord. It seems like in the church today, even people are afraid, leaders and teachers are afraid to talk about the fear of the Lord other than in a kind of a soft way. Um, I don't mean that's universal, but I've seen it happen in that uh, even using the phrase fear of the Lord, they want to change the whole phrase because they think it scares people too much. I don't think we should do that because it's biblical and God's word is living and active and we should really be faithful to that. Recently, I was thinking, I was reading some stuff from uh, the life of St. Francis as a kind of meditation. And it, there was a section in what I was reading, it talked about his very last words to his brothers. And there he is dying in the dirt, naked. And uh, his body is just so, you know, he still has the stigmata. He's all this. And the last words he says to his brothers is the, are, the, are these. He said, I have done my part. May Christ teach you to do yours. Farewell, my children. Abide in the fear of the Lord and ever preserve therein. Persevere, excuse me, therein. So persevere always, brothers, he's saying, in the fear of the Lord. And now this is a saint everybody knows is just such a, a, a profound imitation of Christ and so full of the love of God and the humility of God and the fear of the Lord was so precious to him that he exhorted the brothers at his last breath to say, persevere in the fear of the Lord, walk in the fear of the Lord, seek the fear of the Lord and the grace of the Holy Spirit, right? Working in us to be able to understand it and walk in it. Here's just a few passages from the scripture that talk about how precious the fear of the Lord is. Psalm 33, 8, let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. That's a great prayer for us to pray every day. 
Again, why? Because that's the road to sanity. Proverbs 14, 27, the fear of the Lord is a fountain of life. Psalm 19, 9, the fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true. They are righteous altogether. Proverbs 8, 13, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil, right? So that the writers are talking about, it increases in us hatred for sin. And that's kind of how we, our love for God increases, our hatred for sin increases, and it leads us into living in greater, greater freedom of the sons and daughters of God. There's many, there's over a hundred verses uh, in the Psalms alone, I think, that talk about uh, the fear of the Lord. So I just want to encourage you, friends, to pray into that and to ask the Lord for it. And I, I want to mention to you as well, I wrote a little booklet a few years ago for this very reason, because I've been chewing on it a lot and know how precious it's been in my own life. You can get it at renewalministries.net. But let's end with a little prayer. Lord, we thank you for the wisdom of your word. Holy Spirit, we welcome you. And together we pray, and I pray for my friends who are here. Holy Spirit, awaken in us and grant to us an experience of the fear of the Lord. Come and rightly order our desires and renew our minds and connect us to this fountain of life, which is a healthy fear of the Lord for your glory. And we pray for our friends and family members who are walking away from the faith and who are sort of boldly striding away and they're misunderstanding reality in their own being. Lord, have mercy. And we pray that you do whatever it takes, Lord, to awaken them. Come Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, friends.